attention to order. Staff Sergeant Matthew B. Thompson, 28 years of age, died August 23rd, 2016, in Lashkar Gah, Helmand Province, Afghanistan, of injuries caused by an improvised explosive device that detonated near his patrol while conducting dismounted operations. Staff Sergeant Matthew Thompson was assigned to 3rd Battalion's 1st Special Forces Group, Airborne, Joint Base Lewis McCord, Washington. Staff Sergeant Matthew Thompson's awards and decorations include the Bronze Star Medal, Army Commendation Medal, Army Good Conduct Medal, National Defense Service Medal, Global War on Terrorism Medal, Inherent Resolve Campaign Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Non-Commissioned Officer De Professional Development Ribbon, Second Award, Army Service Ribbon, Overseas Service Ribbon, Basic Parachutist Badge, and Special Forces Task. Staff Sergeant Matthew Thompson was posthumously awarded the Combat Infantry Badge, Bronze Star Medal with B Device, and Purple Heart Medal. Staff Sergeant Matthew Thompson graduated from Concordia University, Irvine, with a BA in Theological Studies in 2011. There are many people who knew Matt in different ways than I did. I knew him as his professor. When Matt came to Southern California, moving out from Wisconsin, you wouldn't have guessed it. He had already started to go native. He walked in looking like a surfer, stood in the doorway and said, what's up? And that was Matt. Always the likable guy, always caring for people, seeking adventure, and a loyal friend. Matt and I had many conversations over time. He'd wrestle with various issues. He'd dig for understanding. He'd always challenge an extra two or three times just to make sure that he was in the mix but also that he understood. He was just that kind of guy. He came to Concordia thinking that he might be a pastor, but he wasn't entirely sure about that. In fact, as he applied for that program, he said, I know God wants me to serve, and I'd like to go and see different places and meet different people to see how God wants me to serve, and I don't know what that's going to look like, but I know that God is with me. Well, he didn't make it to seminary. I'm not sure he ever would have, but he served God in everything that he did. It's no surprise to me that when he found his way into the special forces, that his service was as a medic, an opportunity to serve people. That's what he did. He did it on campus. He did it with family and friends. He did it as he traveled to Africa, and he certainly did it in his honorable service to the military. Nothing I could say about Matt, though, that's more important than his faith. His wife, Rachel, said just after his death, she testified strongly to his faith and his commitment to our Lord Jesus and to the life that he knew he had in him. Everything about this young man testified to the truth of the gospel. He lived that faith. He lived confidently and boldly. And I know that he lives with our Savior now. Matt's life of service continues to testify. He's been a blessing to our country. He's a blessing to all who knew him. He was a blessing to me. In many ways, those words from Dr. Mueller kind of covered it all. We could talk about all the stories and, that some of us may have and memories of Matt being in our office lives, but I think in many ways that would get away from the point of what he would want us to be able to remember and recall. Stories can bring a sense of comfort in the midst of tragedy like this, but ultimately eternal comfort can only come from the hope that is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as we walk through these things, and we may have the question, especially when we lose someone we know life it's obvious it's cut far shorter than it should have. To ask the question, well how long do I have to live? 
many ways we see that the answer is what we have today. For we know not what tomorrow brings. And yet, as was demonstrated in, in the words from Matt's wife and in, in many others, for those who are in Christ, we have all of eternity. So as we wrestle through these things, we can go back to the story. So we grieve today. At the very beginning, when sin first entered into the world, there was a God who grieved because he knew what tragedy it would bring to the life of the people he had created and brought into this world. But in God's grief, there is an activity and a productivity to bring about life, even in the threat and the reality of death. And so he began the plan for a son that would be sent into this world would take upon all the sin of the world, and who himself would then take on death, giving himself over it, in order that he would give the promise of life. And we can see the promise that Christ had in the midst of those things. As he grieved the loss of a friend and Lazarus, who was dead in the tomb, even before he raised him back to life. As he grieved with the widow, who had lost his son and he prayed to town before he brought that son back to life. All to demonstrate that when he says things like, I am the resurrection and the life, he has the power to accomplish what he says. Or when he says, I am the way, the truth, and life, no one comes to the Father except through me, that he has the power to accomplish all that he says. And so listen to these other words from Jesus. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come to judgment, but has passed from death to life. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. For to his disciples on that night before he would go to the cross, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know the way where you are going. How can we know the way? And again, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one Father, except through me. The comfort that we have is that Matt has all the days of eternity. It's not just because of how he was remembered because of the mar miraculous or the marvelous ways of his life, but because he has a Lord who is the living God and has power over life and death and gives the gift eternal life. And so this is the hope that we have. The Apostle Paul wrote these words. He says, we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Holy Baptist, Matt was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all of his sin. So St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection. Join me in a word of prayer. 
Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Give to the family and friends of man and all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care. And casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand. To believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace.